Happy Monday, everybody, and welcome back to your off-season source for all of your fantasy hockey news. We are back for the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, running back the 2022 Fantasy Hockey Draft, who was taken too high, next season's projections, and where you need to be drafting these players. Let's get right to it. Thank you for joining us. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Monday, everybody, and welcome back inside the lab with Steele and I for the Monday episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. And thank you for making us your first listen every single day. We have officially hit the dog days of the NHL Summer Steel. But we are not stopping with our preparation for the upcoming drafts because I'm telling you right now, Steele, these are the days where those fantasy GMs out there, they're slacking in the Mackin, and you can stack up some of this knowledge and make sure you dominate your draft in a few weeks. That's why we're running back the 2022 Fantasy Hockey Draft, continuing with the fifth round, running it down from the 60th draft overall slot Some interesting names here today, Steele, on today's episode. We're going to continue to do this all the way through the summer, so make sure you keep it tapped right here. I want to throw it over to you, though, Steele. This is a holding pattern for a lot of GMs in the NHL right now. We saw a flurry of activity, some big names out there, a couple of them actually on our list today, at least one of them. What do you think about these players that we are taking? This was our listener league, by the way, everyone out there. We're in the fifth round, 60th overall pick. Mr. Morgan Riley of the Toronto Maple Leafs, I'll turn it over to you, my friend. Yeah, a player that is near and dear to both of our hearts, Toronto Maple mm-hmm. Leafs. You know, he's been with the team for 10 years now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he was such a crucial part in getting past the Tampa Bay Lightning in the first round, first time in 19 years. The Toronto Maple Leafs were able to get past the first round, too. Heesh. Four goals, four goals, 41 points in 75 games. So, obviously, mm-hmm. struggled with some injury this past year, which, you know, kind of held him back in the offensive aspects. You know, Four goals from Morgan Riley is a, is a pretty down year for him because we know sixty five like games, but yeah, yeah sixty five games. We know we know he likes to shoot. We know he likes to score. And, you mm-hmm. know, it took him a while to get his first goal of the season. Yeah. So, uh, and he, just looking at the overall season he had, you know, the peripheral stats fluctuate from year to year, but overall mm-hmm. we're very solid. We saw a significant drop in points and shots from you know the the year prior, mm-hmm. obviously due to those injuries and missing time and. You know, the end of the season ranking has Riley finished at 229th overall in fantasy points right. compared to the year prior where he played all 82 games, finished with 68 points, 220 plus shots, and he finished 61st overall in fantasy points in 2021-22 right. yeah. season. So obviously right there from those t- past two seasons, we get a very mm-hmm. different uh, and at the ends of different spectrums here from where yeah. he was two seasons ago. To what happened last year obviously missing those 14 13 games were a significant part of that his adp has him at 54.7 so exactly mm-hmm. in the fifth round which which was in our fantasy league yeah. i think he's more of a late sixth early seventh round pick just because mm-hmm. of how much his uh fantasy points and overall production fluctuates a little bit but yes. he's playing with good players up front he's got a few different partners on the blue line right now we know mm-hmm. he's a great quarterback on the power play he likes to pass that puck to either side, Mitch Marner or Austin Matthews. So we, I, I think sixth round, seventh round is where he should land. When this guy's on his game, Steele, there is so much to like about him. But he is also yeah. so much connected to the success of the Toronto Maple Leafs power play. And sometimes, for whatever reason, we saw that power play run dry. It should yeah. be one of the best in the business. And it was when it's clicking. The other thing about Morgan Riley here, Steele, is last year you saw, say what you will about the Toronto Maple Leafs overall, a real commitment to playing that defensive brand of hockey. And that means the offensive numbers are going to take a hit. Of course, the injury also plays a factor. But my take with Morgan Riley headed into this season, Steele, given that he was banged up and started so slowly, I think you can might get this guy at a bit of a steal. 41 points is low for him. And I know the injuries, it's not that low, right? He's a 50-point guy, 45, 50 points. I see 50 points for Morgan Riley this year. That means 10 more points. I think his plus-minus is going to be better. I think with health, 
You can get him at the right spot, but at the end of the day, you know this is tied to the overall success of the Toronto Maple Leafs. This isn't rocket science. This team is in flux. There's a lot of questions, and we won't dive into the Toronto Maple Leafs today. I want to focus on Morgan Riley. You mentioned it. I think the fair spot for him, sixth, seventh round, but maybe in some of those deeper league steal, some guys might pass on him. Don't pass on him too long because this Toronto Maple Leafs team will also continue to score goals. They will indeed. And I know this next player on the draft board uh, will continue to score goals as well. Jack Eichel taken 59th Mm. overall. This was actually my pick in the fifth round. I took Jack Eichel. And you know me. I absolutely love this player. He he actually might be my favorite player in the NHL right now. He's he's one of the best players in the NHL right now. I love watching him play. I love what he was able to do in the postseason. Mm. And what he did in the playoffs. Like, first playoff run and 22 points and and wins a Stanley Cup. Just absolutely incredible what Jack Eichel and the Vegas Golden Knights were able to accomplish this past year. 66 points in 67 games. We all know this at this point. He has struggled with injuries. He had a yes. very serious surgery just a few yes. seasons ago to get back to this point. We know that's something that's going to have to be dealt with when drafting this player. And when he's on your team, he deals with injuries. But he's practically a point per player at this point. Like I said, 66 points in 67 games. 59 hits, 56 blocks. He loves to shoot over 220 plus shots again for this guy. His ADP says 46.3. And like I said, there's obviously some caution around this guy, obviously around this player because of Mm. all the injuries that he's suffered so far throughout his NHL career. But I actually think an ADP of 46.3 is very accurate for a draft position Mm -hmm. Uh, for Jack Mm -hmm. Eichel. I actually might draft him a little bit higher than 46 uh, overall. I think he does very deservingly so could probably go late second, early third. You know, again, that injury, the injury caution has to be there. But I would not be surprised if his ADP goes up to 35, 36, jumps up a full round because he is that skilled. Mm. He's that talented. And like I said, probably Mm. one of my favorite players to watch right now in the NHL. And actually right there, because at this situation, I'm not going to disagree with you, but sometimes when you do fall in love with these players and uh, I'll get to one of my picks in this round and that's what happened, it can hurt you, right? This actually in this situation helped you, but usually when you really fall in love with the player because you like what they do on the ice, it doesn't always translate to the fantasy success. This is one of those cases actually where it did translate into fantasy success. And I'll leave it at this with Jack Eichel because – I think you and I have covered this topic very, very well. (laughs) This is one of those situations, Steele, that a lot of people were ready to write Jack Eichel off for a number of reasons, right? Let's run the tape back. Bad attitude. Calling out the front office. Demanding to do the surgery his way. Wanting out of Buffalo. Maybe it all made sense, right? And it all has worked out for Jack Eichel. Was it the right way? I don't know, but I think one of those situations, right, that we've looked at now in hindsight, it's worked out very well for the Buffalo Sabres. It's worked out for Jack Eichel, and uh, there's a banner about to be raised in the rafters in Vegas. So it's one of those rare situations where it's worked out for everyone. I hope that our coverage of the Fantasy Rewind draft is helping you guys out there listening to dominate the upcoming draft. We're going to continue to talk about the fifth round and we'll run it back all the way down to number one. So you know what's good all off season long. We're going to talk a little bit about Sam Reinhart, Jacob Truba, Tage Thompson, and others around the break. But today's episode is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. You need to be taking your first swing at betting on the MLB on FanDuel and you get 10 times your first bet amount and bonus bets up to 200 bucks. That's right, just 20 bucks and you'll land $200 back in bonus bets, win or lose. That's 200 you could be spending on everything from the money line to the over-unders to who you think hits that first home run, and all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. There's no better place to bet on the MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Sign up today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to 200 bucks in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Don't forget, hit that subscribe, hit Mm. that follow button. We appreciate Mm. all that love and support you show us every single day. And we will be coming with that hot content 
the hot yep. episodes of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast all summer long, continuing on the conversation of the Hockey Draft Rewind 2022, mm-hmm. going mm-hmm. through round five. Sam yep. Reinhart, the next player up on the draft board, 58th overall in our Locked On Fantasy Hockey League, mm-hmm. first annual hockey mm-hmm. league as well. We're going to continue that next season. So keep oh, your eyes yeah. peeled all summer long for information regarding that. But Sam mm-hmm. Reinhart, 58th overall. Yep. Uh, you know, I'll quickly throw it over to you, but ADP Please. says 67.8, which was originally my first thought on Reinhardt, but mm. taking a look at the numbers and fantasy ranking, okay. uh, deservingly so, deserves to go in the fifth round. So very quickly before we get to Sam Reinhardt, and this is my bad, but two points I wanted to mention about Morgan Riley, the draft that year is overlooked steel. And I mean the 2012 entry draft, Neil yeah. Yakupov, Ryan Murray, Alex Galchenyuk, and... This is what Griffin Reinhardt, his brother, taken fourth overall ahead of Morgan Riley and right after him, Hampus Lindholm. So hats off to the front office there. And I think one of the reasons Jack Eichel doesn't get the love he does steal very quickly, let's remember who he was taken behind. Mr. Connor McDavid at second overall. Any other draft year, Jack Eichel is getting so much love. You know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to throw those caveats out there. And Sammy Reinhardt. Proving to be just one of those go-to guys that when things get tough, this guy seems to elevate his game. And speaking mm-hmm. of not getting enough love, toiling away in Buffalo, a couple of really good seasons as well, Steel. 50 points, 65 points, 50 points. And then 82 points in Florida the year before. I think we need to throw a little bit more respect on this guy's name. We especially do. when he brought it in the playoffs as well. He did, and we do have to put more respect on Sam Reinhardt's game, and that's why I was very shocked because, again, my original thought when I saw his ADP at 67.8 was that maybe it yeah. is a little too high. Maybe he actually deserves to go a little bit lower, mm-hmm. lower but then sure. you look deep sure. into the stats, the peripheral stats, you know, the, the overall yeah. offensive production, the penalty minutes, which is uh, actually surprising. He's a very clean player, so for banger mm-hmm. leagues, he's actually not one. So, you know, it's a very surprising player to see about how well he actually produces on all aspects of fantasy hockey leagues 30 goal scores 67 points in 82 games um pretty much does a lot of things so well for the florida uh, panthers like i said uh very surprisingly plays a a clean game not a very physical Mm -hmm. player only had 58 hits this past year but he finished 51st in fantasy points this past season and 39 in go. fantasy points the year prior. So it doesn't look like look like it. He's mm. not one of those high quality names that you get to see in McKinnon or McDavid or That's Matthews. Just it. You don't get yeah. to see that in Reinhardt because he doesn't have that big name, but he produces for fantasy hockey league. So don't be surprised when mm. Sam Reinhardt sneaks up on you. And when you look at your draft year in and year out, and we'll talk about my mistake later in this dra- in this round, steal taking a player way too high that I expected to produce offensively sam reinhardt kind of quietly goes about his business yeah and uh, when i look at him being able to do the numbers that i just mentioned in buffalo you know 79 games 79 games 82 games 82 games he's been a very durable player as well and when you talk about some of the intangibles and the peripherals not always panning out with players but they are in the lineup every single night fantasy wise that's something that also needs to play into how you put together your roster. Because sometimes, and I have been a victim of this regularly, you see the flashy name, hashtag Patrick Line. He could score 40, but he could also miss at least 50 games because he's just not in that lineup. Sam Reinhart, not as flashy, little underrated. But when you look at those games played, maybe let's focus on some of those numbers aside from all the flashy ones. Sometimes, sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes that is very true. And I actually like that comparison, bringing in Patrick Lyon into the conversation, because that is so true. That is one of those players that, uh, you know, take a chance on. You're not sure how it's going to pan out because he gets injured nope. quite quite frequently and very fluky injuries at that as well. Mm-hmm. This player might be, you might be on the receiving side of an injury. Jacob Truba, Ooh. 57th overall in our fantasy hockey yep. draft. And first off, way too high, just way too way high. Too high. ADP says 101, which is the ninth, 10th round, which I actually think is perfect for this player. And there's not really much 
offensive upside to his game. You know, like if you look at through his career, he had one 50 point season, but the other nine seasons were less than 30 points. There are a few players who provide fantasy value solely based on those peripheral stats, blocks, hits, shots, penalty (laughs) minutes, plus minus. And he's one of those players, 63 penalty minutes, 200 plus shots, 196 blocks, 218 hits. He only had 30 points this past season, eight goals, 22 assists, right. but he's durable. He's reliable. He knows he knows his role on the team, and he does a mighty fine job, and it might I add that as well. He's one of the few big hitters in the league right now who actually can keep it clean on contact. He finished 101st in fantasy points this past season, which is exactly his ADP. That's why I said Ooh, it's perfect for him. So yeah. I think ninth, 10th round – you get the you get those peripheral stats from Jacob Truba, mm-hmm. and that's where you get the fantasy value. And like I said, very few players can do that, and he's one of them. This could be one of those cases, Steele, because you know you were on point with he had the one fifty point season, but last year, you know, before this previous season, he had thirty nine points, eleven goals, twenty eight assists for a D man that also does what he does with his body and defensively that becomes very, very attractive. And I think it was maybe one of those players that GMs reached a little bit for, and they reached in our league. Does he still bring so much value? Of course. And blue liners are really tough to bring because they have to take so much wear and tear. So we mentioned the durability. It's funny that we just talked about it with Sam Reinhart, and it fits so perfectly with Jacob Truba. Um, So this is just at the end of the day. Also, I wanted to bring up, the quality of team that he plays for. And we might be a broken record with the New York Rangers, <laughs> but when a defensive unit is able to play in front of a goaltender like Igor Shesterkin, they're able to go out there every single night steal. You've played hockey. You know what it's like when your goalie's on a heater. You don't even need the puck gets turned over. Doesn't matter. We're getting the puck back in a second after a big save and you run it back. That's one of those intangibles with hockey when you have a goaltender of Shesterkin's ilk. And I think you see that confidence also hold the phone. Adam Fox, nasty. Keandre Miller, nasty. Jacob Truba, nasty. And now they're adding some decent pieces around them. Eric Gustafson brought in. Don't sleep on the quality of this defensive unit. Anchored by Jacob Truba, Hundo P, but I'm with you. 100 overall, did you say? Yeah, 101 was his ADP, which I think Taking is absolutely him right perfect. in that range still yep. this year. Maybe even a little bit later because I see more minutes going to my boy Keandre. Yeah, Keandre Miller, one of those players as well. You know, real quickly before we move on to Tage Please. Thompson and Jake Please. Ottinger on this list, I just yes, want sir. to talk about Keandre Miller real quick. Let's because do it. You know, I love that guy. He is great, and he's one of those players to keep an eye on next season as well. Agreed. Fantasy-wise, just pulling up his stats right now. Third season in the league. Um, He's pretty much, again, one of those durable players. He's only missed, he's missed, what, six games in three seasons so far, which is absolutely incredible. Very durable player. 43 points last season in 79 games. 37 penalty minutes, so a little bit there for Banger Leagues. Again, he's still a young defenseman right now. He's 23 years old, yes. 162 yes. hits, 105 blocks, and 113 mm-hmm. shots. The shots need to go up, but that will come in due time. But nonetheless, he is definitely a New York Rangers, but overall just a defenseman to keep an eye on that mm-hmm. he will go up uh, at least three or four rounds from last year. Also a first-round draft pick, 22nd yes. overall. And there's something to be said about some of these players that slip a little bit. Six foot five, 215 pounds. He can skate like the wind as well, Steel. Some of these guys, you know, I get real high on. Keandre Miller, you're going to hear me continue to double circle this guy's name. Because also, because of those players, Truba, Fox, and some of the others that have been on the blue line in New York, He's faded a little bit from that name reference, and that's where you got to pounce as a fantasy GM. Yeah, and going from one giant to another, Keandre Miller to Tage hey. Thompson. That's who we'll be talking about mm-hmm. next, including Jake Ottinger to wrap up this entire episode. But thank My you man. so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Mm-hmm. Please hit that subscribe, hit that follow button. We appreciate all that love and support. You show this podcast every single day. Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock in the morning on your favorite podcast platform and on YouTube. 
So make sure, again, you hit that subscribe, hit that follow button, and we will continue to give you all that love and advice you need for your hockey, hockey fantasy team uh, this summer and all year long. Tage Thompson, though, coming in at 56th overall in our fantasy mm-hmm. hockey league and really has taken the league by storm. Everyone was blown away. I'm blown away. You're blown away about what this kid can do. 6'6", six, mm-hmm. six, 220 giant who has silky smooth hands from in tight areas, ridiculous Ovechkin-like slap shot from the same office the grade eight has used all these years. Mm -hmm. And again, getting him last year, 56th overall, was an absolute steal. Guess what his ADP was? His ADP was 132.3. Wow. And it won't be like that for long, because I can tell you, guarantee It will not be like that this year, Steel guarantee you that he's going in the first or second round easily um well right off the jump shout out to our boys from fantasydata.com overall fantasy points totaled last regular season just very quickly i'm just going to ream off a few names that tage thompson was ahead of how about special seasons from ryan nugent hopkins he was still better willie nylander Braden point Sidney crosby Mitchell Marner went on a heater, still more. And I know the peripherals for those players change from thing to thing. And I'm not always trying to compare every single one. We just need to pay attention to Tage Thompson. And not only that, Steele, shout out to one of the wedding guests that I met the other night on Saturday night. Also, shout out to Lucas and Lindsay. Beautiful wedding over the weekend. I met a Buffalo Sabres fan. And we start to talk about fantasy hockey, future, blah, blah, blah. This is all that matters. He goes, oh, you're going to hate on the Sabres. You're going to hate it. Wrong. Because me and my boy Steel Roden have been on the Sabres come up for a year now. Do they have a couple of holes to fix? For sure. Am I putting a crown on them? Definitely not. But it's time to pay attention to what is going on in Buffalo. Especially offensively, Steel. And before I finish my little rant, how about the Buffalo Sabres finished third in overall yeah. scoring last year with 293 goals ahead of teams like the New Jersey Devils, Dallas Stars, Tampa Bay Lightning, Toronto Maple Leafs, Colorado Avalanche, and the LA Kings. Do not sleep. I don't think this Tage Thompson madness is going anywhere soon, and I'll leave it at this. Last two years, 156 games played, 85 goals, 77 assists for 162 points. Speaking of throwing respect on someone's name, I think this guy might be right at the top of the players we need to be doing that for. Yeah, and and again, we are Toronto Maple Leaf fans, but we are never biased on this show, on this podcast. We keep it all 100%. Well, we try. We try, we try, but we keep it 100%. We keep it real 100% of the time. Uh, (laughs) Never biased on this show, but I'm with you. And what what Tate Thompson has been able to do the last few seasons, you know, Mm -hmm. I see this quote pop up every now and again, but two years Mm -hmm. ago, I I can't remember if it was Kevin Adams or if it was Don Granato, the head coach of the Buffalo Sabres, but – They were talking to Tate Thompson. Again, I see this now and again, but they pretty much like, dude, you are a you are a goal scorer in the National Hockey League. Like, what are you waiting for right now? You need to start scoring goals because you are a goal scorer in this league. And he went out there and proved them exactly right and just started ripping them top shelf, dangling from in tight and tucking them in behind Mm -hmm. goaltenders. So he has been fantastic. Again, easily going first or second round in next year's fantasy draft. Jake Ottinger, though. 55th Ooh. overall in our fantasy league. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we've obviously talked at length about different situations for goaltenders, when you should even start taking goaltenders, consider taking them. Mm-hmm. Who's mm-hmm. the first goaltender going off yep. the board? We talked at length about that. Right. And I'll start it off with this. Yeah. Jake Please. Ottinger is a top five goaltender in the NHL right now. He's a top seven fantasy hockey goalie right now, in my opinion. I think there's a mm-hmm. few other goaltenders that uh, bring a little bit more fantasy value. But what what do you think about that right there? Two things. I'm personally invested in Jake Ottinger and my Keeper Dynasty Leagues. I've paid a price to bring in one of the goaltenders that just really impressed me from a number of angles. Not only is he on a really good team, not only is he at a perfect age to hit his prime, fantasy and otherwise, he was sixth last year in goals against 2.34. 2.37, sixth in save percentage, 919, and second, tied for second in shutouts with five, only behind Sorokin with six. 
I think you can put him in the top five fantasy mix as well, Steel. Of course, I'm still going to tip the scales to Hellebuck. My boy, Ilya. I'm a little bit worried about Vasilevsky and what happens in Tampa this year, but he still yeah. deserves that rep until we see a fall off. But he's right there for me, those four. And I know there's some others you could throw in there, but I think also you're going to see from Dallas, especially after bringing in Duchesne, and I know that's only one move. We saw how good the Dallas star can be. We yeah. know RoboCop. We know Hints. And I just think they're going to have a come up led by Jake Ottinger. I love this goalie steal. And I think at the end of the day, though, what you said is the main takeaway here. Wait to take these guys. You don't. I made the mistake of taking Ilya in the second round. It was bold. Did it work out because he had a good year? Maybe. But you were right. You can wait. Fill up your roster on the front and the back end, and then maybe wait till that fourth or fifth round to start taking guys. But I think Ottinger's off the board one of the first three or four this year for sure. I, I I definitely think that's what it will be. I, I would also throw in UC Soros and Alexander Gorgiev as two fantasy hockey goalies. I would take over uh, Jake Ottinger Ooh. just just for the teams they're playing for. Obviously, Gorgiev for the Colorado it's Avalanche. Tough. But it's tough. You, it's a good it is tough. They're, the thing is, they're all close. They're all yeah, it's know, close. one, it's two, like, three yeah. points away. They're yep. all super close. Yep. But UC Soros has been UC Soros has been a top three goaltender in fantasy hockey leagues the last three seasons. And even though, again, Nashville has been worse than Dallas, I just think the fantasy value-wise, mm. Soros, mm. uh, just, again, it's so very close. close. It's very, very close. close. So it's hard, yep. to, it's hard to, like, compare or It's hard to compare it because they're only points. 1A so, and 1B, right? Yeah, 1A, 1A and, 1B. and 1B. That's a perfect example of how to explain it. But, again, with the Dallas Stars, I think last year you and I had that big question mark on – this mm -hmm. team because we didn't really know what their identity would be. We didn't really know what they could put up uh, right. point point wise and win percentage wise. And I think mm -hmm. they answered that our, our question very emphatically this last year, I obviously agree. in the playoffs. And we now know what to expect from the next season. Like you said, they had Matt Duchesne, they get Sam Steele, they get Craig Smith as well. A few, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a good depth guy, uh, mm -hmm. a veteran player up front in the top six. And then Sam Steele, who is a very underrated young player in the bottom six group. So, I think you, real quick, I think you made an excellent point uh, a few you. months ago about the mileage Ooh. on Ollinger last year. Too much. And again, that's something that we've seen and that we've been talking about with Vasilevsky mm. with the amount of mm. playoff games yeah. that he's had to play mm -hmm. the last three seasons. Like you said, he played 62 games in the regular season. I think they'll have to try to get that down to 55 games played in the regular season, save some of that energy for the playoffs. But mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to... Uh, you know, show kudos to you on that good point. And it is one of those things we also saw with Connor Hellebuck. And that will obviously affect yes. how many wins they get next season. So keep it in mind. It's one of those things that are really, really hard to project. But since I went off in K. Andre Miller, one of those other guys steal. And we're getting early into my little dirty tidbit <laughs> of players that I got my eyes on heavy especially after the Duchesne ad. I don't even want to put it out there because I think this Wyatt Johnson kid is about to go off. I love everything about Wyatt Johnson. His shot, his confidence, most especially. He seemed to be clutch steel. What, I think he was the youngest player. Was he the youngest player in the league last year? I think he was like right there. Double circle your boy WJ. Wyatt Johnson can be in the mix with some really good veteran players as well, Steel. He doesn't have to do anything except play his game. Let's talk a lot more about some of those young guns all summer long. You know I have him circled on my list, too. Hey. I'm going to I'm gonna personally hey. make sure I uh -oh. draft him right uh, before you in the fantasy hockey yeah, draft. I it's going to be a great – it's going to be a great time next September. Side make, bet. Sure you're make sure you're tuning in all summer long for the information. We're getting – Flip and I, we're going to iron out all the details for next year's Fantasy Hockey League. Oh, yeah. Second time around doing it. So we're very excited about getting more fans, new fans, and more listeners into the Fantasy Hockey League. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Make sure you're tuning in Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock in the morning Eastern time. And again, thank you so much for tuning for today's episode with Flip and I. Have a great day. Good luck with all your summer bets out there. And we shall see you back here again tomorrow. Peace.